the dog lift his head briefly, Mike, and I, I just want people to know uh, he is sentient. Uh, I appreciate you joining me today, and what do you make of, uh, of where we are? Yeah, interesting backdrop and uh, not a comfortable position for Fed Chair Powell going into the meeting this week, um, primarily because less than two weeks ago, he came out with a very hawkish message and essentially signaled that the Fed was not only going to go to a higher peak on the Fed funds rate, but would be willing to consider moving more quickly to get there uh, if, this, if the totality of the data um, continued to, to suggest the Fed overshooting its inflation target and, and strong growth figures. And that really meant the February CPI, which came in hot. So, you know, they're in a bit of a box here. If they were forward looking, I think they would be looking at inflation expectations, which are collapsing a yield curve that's still deeply inverted in money supply figures that had been collapsing in a banking crisis, if anything, will lower the velocity of money, lower the neutral interest rate. So even by skipping a rate hike, monetary conditions likely will continue to tighten. Um, but they, you know, if markets are stable, they may, they may go for the 25 basis points. I do think that is a mistake, however. You know, I saw uh, Lars Christensen and others writing and, and highlighting that drop in break evens and basically saying uh, the Fed's almost at risk. The market is signaling of missing its inflation target on the downside. I wrote about that today. And people, by the way, those who follow commodities and that kind of thing are saying you're absolutely right. And we're not paying enough attention to that message. Others who are looking at the inflation around them are saying, how in the world can that be possible? Um, do you think it's really possible that we could see CPI go from six to something more like four, three, two percent? I mean, it, to what the break-evens are basically telling us for the next five years, 2.1. Look, it wasn't very long ago that you had a lot of people that didn't believe we'd ever see inflation again. If we think about late 2020 going into 2021, the money supply exploded first, commodities exploded first, nominal GDP exploded upward, uh, and then inflation started to accelerate and continue to accelerate and persisted far longer than what the consensus was thinking back in early 2021, you know, with the whole temporary transitory imbroglio. But if you were looking forward, looking at money supply, looking at break even evens looking at leading indicators, you really weren't surprised about how things unfolded. Uh, the problem now is a backward-looking monetary policy will put us into perpetual boom and bust cycles, and we're moving into the bust phase now. And you probably saw this chart in our research, but I have 165 years of history showing, showing benchmark short rates, so even predating the Fed and yield curves, when you get these rapid spikes in short rates and inverted yield curves, invariably you end up with a financial crisis in recession. So, you know, it's not a complete surprise that we're in this predicament.